Well, good morning, folks. I'm Matt Godfrey, and welcome to Barston Lakes in the Midlands. And we're here today on one of my favourite commercial fisheries to do a little bit of feeder fishing. And the thing I really enjoy about feeder fishing on big open water lakes like this is that you've got quite a few different options of how to catch the different species of fish in here. Now, at Barston, some of you might know it already, there's a big head of smaller fish, and by them, I mean skimmers and F1s, which are great weight builders, but there's also some big carp. So hopefully today, I'll be able to show you how to catch some of the smaller species with a few bigger ones mixed in as well. When you're presented with quite a lot of water in front of you like we've got today it can be tricky to decide where to actually fish especially when you're thinking about catching two different lots of fish so i like to keep things quite simple and think about where different fish actually live in the lake now for me bigger carp and warier clever species like that tend to back off into the middle of the lake early in a session if it's a pleasure session or a match and there's a lot of banging about on the bank the wiser bigger fish seem to move out into the middle of the lake so for me my starting gambit is often nick a big fish early by fishing a long way out in the middle of the lake on a big hybrid feeder loaded with pellets a nice big positive up bay on the hook so you can pinpoint and target them better fish but for the majority of the session of course you want to enjoy catching some other fish and that's where my second line of attack comes into play and today i've positioned that about 20 meters out a lovely comfortable cast and I'm going to use some different baits there to attract the skimmers and F1s and other species. That's a sweet fish meal ground bait with a few micro pellets, a few dead maggots and hopefully draw in skimmers, bream, a few F1s to get some bites through that middle bit of the session and if it's a match what a great way of building up your weight. But then of course gets to end at day we all like a big one to finish with so I've still got my big rod set up and hopefully I'll be able to catch a couple of big ones later in the day when they have that feeding spell a little bit later on. One thing a lot of people ask is how do you actually kick off your session on venues like this? And for me, the only place I actually introduce any amount of bait at the start is on that shorter swim. The reason for that is because hopefully I'm going to nick an odd big one long and I'm going to spend most of my time building up a weight or enjoying the middle of my pleasure session by fishing that short line. So I want to get some bait there get some fish there competing and once you've got a few there at the buffet hopefully they'll attract some of the mates as well so what am i putting in there at the off three big bait up feeders of sweet marine ground bait it's a lovely rich quite powerful fish mealy bait with a lot of crushed pellets some hemp in there loads of nice ingredients with some dead maggots skimmers f1s love dead maggots and a few micro pellets not too many particles because i want to keep them fish grubbing about and searching for bait and what I'm going to be doing all the while over the top of that is pinging in some 8mm activated pellets. Again, not too many, just three or four at a time that will make a nice little plop when they go in and also create a nice grazing area. So fish can be picking up bait here, there, left, right, probably over the space of maybe, I don't know, four or five metres square, which isn't a problem because when you plop your little hybrid feeder over the top, you've got a nice little trap of bait. So a big area, keep them in your swim nice amount of noise keep fetching the mates in there and then your little trap over the top and hopefully an hour or so into the session i'll see some bubbles come up and we can catch some skimmers and f1s so once i've introduced them free feeders on that short line i'm going to start the session by fishing out long like i've mentioned hopefully a few big ones will have backed off into the middle of the lake and it's amazing how often you chuck out and actually catch a big carp first chuck in just because you're fishing right where they are at that time of day now bait for out there for me is really really simple but very important and i mainly use micro pellets on my feeder two mil versions and a lot of people think well that's a little bit plain and simple but to get an edge these days when everybody's doing the same there's loads of little tweaks you can do to enhance them pellets and i'll show you a few of them as we go on but my theory is to start off nice and plain catch a few fish to begin with 
and then when everyone else goes quiet and you stop catching, it's time to make a few little additions. Maybe I'll change the flavour of my pellets. I've got some different sticky syrups with me today and often introducing some activate smell or some sweet cell can instigate a few more bites. You can also change the colour of them pellets and when you've caught three or four on a plain brown pellet, change into a brighter colour to bring different fish in, a yellow, often a red in very coloured water is effective, can get you a few extra bites. So all these little changes I like to think of as impacts to keep me catching them bigger fish. These fish at Barston are match fish twice a week, they get a lot of pressure from carp anglers, so they're quite wise creatures and you've got to apply all these little changes to keep putting them in your net. There's always that age old question, how do you prepare your pellets for method or hybrid feeder fishing? And for me, it always starts the night before. If you know you're going fishing, to get the perfect pellet for method or hybrid fishing, you've got to prepare them the night before. I use the two mil cell or activated pellets because they've got that little bit of an extra flavor already and they've got a nice little bit of stickiness. And if you prepare them the night before, they're absolutely sock on for the morning. How I do it? fill up a strainer with pellets and completely drown them with water. And I always leave them for exactly five minutes. I always set my little timer on my phone so I know it's bang on five. Four minutes, not quite enough for me. And six minutes, you drown them and they go a little bit soggy. Drown them for five minutes exactly. Train them off and tip them into a big bucket and just leave them in that bucket overnight until you get to the bank in the morning. Now, sometimes you might wanna just give them a little flick of water, literally rub your hands in water and rub it through your pellets just to put a little bit of a fresh water coating on them. You don't need to pour any more on it, but the finished product that I'm looking for is a pellet that I can squeeze into a ball nicely like this with one firm squeeze, but then break them back down into whole micro pellets like so, and that way, you know that you can squeeze them nice and firmly onto your hybrid feeder, but within a matter of minutes, they're gonna have broken down, expose your up bait and be nice and accessible to fish. So for me, if you're a serious angler, you've got time on your side, doing them that way is the ultimate to get them perfect. Of course, not everybody's got time to prepare the pellets at home. And if you wanna do them on the bank or you're in a rush, it's absolutely fine. You can still get them nice. Simply cover them with water, give them a bit less time in your strainer, three or four minutes, drain them off and leave them while you're setting up. If I was to give a little bit of advice, I'd always do it as soon as I got to my peg so they've got time to take on that water. But if they're not quite right or not quite sticky enough, another little trick, add a little bit of sticky syrup. This one's the cell one. It's got a lovely, sweet, but sticky edge to it. Give it a little squirt over your pellets, work it through them, and in a matter of minutes, they'll be nice, perfectly sticky enough to get on that hybrid or method feeder, and you've got a little bit of cell flavor along there with them. Always nice when you get one early on that long rod. Lovely bites here, you know, because you're fishing so far out. I've gone about 50 metres out today. Not stupid, just a nice chuck out into the lake where I think them bigger fish are going to be to start with. And the bites are just a nice steady pull around. You'll, you'll see a few a little bit later, I'm sure. It's always lovely when you sat there having your cup of coffee and it just goes... And what it is yet, there's all sorts in here, ghosties, commons, mirrors. Oh. Just take your time with them. Obviously, if it's a match, we're going into autumn now, but any time of year, eight, nine pound fish, they're always welcome. Oh, look at him, lovely common. Yes. Right, well, while we've got him, we might as well have a little look at the uh, tackle and setup for this long rod. 12 foot Aventus distance feeder rod's my choice. Nice through action, but loads of backbone in this bottom end to get your feeder out there. That's matched with a castism reel loaded with five pound Pulse Pro mainline which is important, quite a thin main line, 
because in conjunction with a shock leader, it flies out there very easily. You can cast a long way with not a lot of effort. Onto the shock leader itself, that's 10 pound shield down to a 45 gram hybrid feeder with a black long elasticated stem. Now, when I'm fishing a long way out like that, do like a black elasticated stem. I'm sure that it helps hook fish a lot better when you're so far out, they'll bolt against the feeder and hook themselves. And also it gives you loads of cushion when you're playing them. Last thing you wanna do, wait a long time for a bite, off a big fish and lose it. And with these long black stems, you don't lose many at all. And then the hook length right at the business end is 019 N gauge to a size 12 QM1. And I've got that four inches long with nice little bayonet on there which is really useful quick and easy for pushing into the wafter hook baits that i'm using out there now talking about hook baits it's something that's very very important you'd think that loading your feeder molding some pellets around it and just casting a long way the fish would come along suck it up and it won't really matter what you've got on but you'll be amazed how often on a certain day or in certain conditions fish particularly like certain colours, certain flavours. Today, for example, yellow has been standout best for catching carp. I tried a pink one, wasn't quite as good, but in clearer water or even more coloured water, a pink might be better. So I think it's a case of getting confident in your baits, but also trying different ones. Be prepared, if you've had three or four casts with no indications, change the colour of your bait, put a little bit of Captivate flavour on there to give it an extra boost. It's amazing how often it catches you that one fish out of the blue and especially in the cooler months an eight or ten pound carp extra by doing something different is a massive bonus don't know why but it never seems to get a plan for me just had my first drop in on the shorter rod been pinging a few pellets bit of a lighter setup for skimmers for f1s and these smaller fish and guess what i've hooked first chuck mr carp Hopefully, though, he's a nice one. I've got some balanced gear on, and we'll get him out. Look at him, lovely mirror. There we are. Just shows. Thought we we're going to catch some skimmers and F1s there. And we've got a carp already. But it sort of proves that theory of what I've talked about, that building it up, putting that bait in at the start, pinging them pellets, gets fish competing in there. And obviously, if he's here... There's likely to be a few more as well, so before I chuck back in, oh, I can't get that hook out, there we go. Before I chuck back in, we'll have a uh, little look at this setup because, like I've said, it's four skimmers, F1 smaller fish, but hook a few of these, you'll get them out as well. One thing that's massively important in any feeder fishing is timing, and by that I mean how long you actually leave your feeder out for after casting in. And I actually use a stopwatch so I can gauge how long it takes to get a bite. You'll be amazed how often you notice a pattern whereby you might get a bite after three or four minutes and that'll continue throughout the day. Obviously, it's different on both of these swims. Out long for carp, you probably have to wait a little bit longer and I'll often leave it in for up to 10 minutes before I wind in. On this shorter line, fishing for smaller fish, I'm trying to build a swim i want to cast a little bit more regular so three or four minutes maximum on this before i cast in again and all the time just casting a minute or so ago i'm just going to ping three or four pellets a couple of times over the top of where i'm fishing you don't need to plow it in especially in the colder months three or four pellets falling through every sort of three or four minutes is enough just to bring fish in bit of noise bit of bait falling through and you're building that short swim up. Gear for the shorter line, scaled down a bit, tailored towards them smaller fish. But, as you've seen, if we do hook a carp, we still want to get it out, so it's not too light, which it doesn't need to be when you feed a fishing. Kicking off, I've got an 11 foot N-gauge rod, lovely soft action, one ounce tip in it, perfect for F1s and skimmers, and that 11 foot length, lovely for chucking 
20 to 30 meters out on big lakes like this. Real TDR matched with eight pound Pulse Pro line. Reason for eight pound is because I'm fishing it straight through to the feeder on this rod. Don't need to cast a million miles, so I don't need a shop leader. And then on the feeder front, everything's a little bit smaller, a little bit softer. I've got a 24 gram small hybrid feeder. And in that, rather than the long black stem, I've got a shorter white one, which is a lot softer, which enables me to catch them skimmers, F1s. But if I do a carp, get him in no problem. But that also lets me fish with quite a light hook length. I've got an 015 engage up length on there. So that soft elastic cushions it. Nice soft rod cushions any bigger fish you do up. And that's to a size 16 LWG hook. I've got an eyed one on here because it's actually got a nice little speed stop because something I love doing when I'm fishing for skimmers and smaller fish on these lighter hybrids, shorter, is to use expanders on the hook. Now they're a great bait for that kind of fish. Lovely and soft, sit behind that speed stop, lovely. Because they're soft and lightweight, when a skimmer comes in and sucks up near your feeder, that expander flies in the mouth. And not a lot of people use them on an hybrid or a method feeder because they can be tricky to keep on. But if you get the expander right, nice little speed stop set up, you'll catch loads of fish on expanders on a feeder. Top secret that is, don't tell anyone. Well, there you go, nice spell, catching some skimmers, even an odd cheeky carp on that shorter line. But then getting to them final hours of the session, fancied an odd big one. So I've nipped back out long. I think we've got a decent fish on. You often find that with them bigger carp, you do get little spells of catching them. But for me, on big places like this here at Barston, first hour fishing for them out in the middle of the lake is key, especially in a competition when there's all that pressure on. They swim out into the middle to get out of the way. And then later on, you can normally cast back on top of where you caught a few to start with and nick another couple of big ones to finish, which is lovely. Nice common, look at him. Colin the common. Come on, mate, my arm's aching. Been fighting your mates all day. There he is. Look at that, cameraman will be pleased with that one. He's gorgeous. Well, there you go. That's what I love about big open water lakes like Barston. You can target loads of different species of fish, different sizes, some chunkier ones further out on that long approach, then some skimmers. We've had an odd one of your mates, odd carp short as well today. Some F1s, get them two methods right. Short, aggressive for smaller fish, long trap setting for these boys, and you can enjoy plenty of action all year round.